So um, I know I've spoken about this before, but I think it's such an essential point that the other day I was um, contemplating some of this again. And um, I thought about making a little bit of a video about it, which is the I. Who am I? And that's not Roald, and that's not you know a person or a body, but this I who is the one who is perceiving everything. And so I wrote this little piece here, um, and I said, um, I wrote down that which is always here. Who am I? Well, I am that, the one who is always here, that which is always here. And that which is always here is not what came first, or what came last, nor the things that came in between. That which is always here is that which is watching. That which is watching all these things that come and go. So it is always I that is aware. So it's that which is always here. It's the, the unchanging. You see, for most people, they are identified with who they think they are, which is the body and the mind and their past and their memories and their history and their associations with all the things they've learned and seen and done. But in fact, the real I is the one who perceives all of that. It could be seen as a blank canvas, perception, awareness, consciousness, and it's nothingness, and this nothingness is just at peace, and it becomes aware of the things that you see, hear, taste, think, and all of the sensations and, per and perceptions that come along. But this I, this consciousness, is the primordial state that precedes it. I am that. And this is why you see where the mis the mis most of the religions make the big mistakes because it becomes you know, so palatable for, for the masses instead of the truth. And when Jesus supposedly said, I am the way and the life and the truth, he wasn't speaking about him, the man, Jesus Christ, being the way, the life, and the truth. He was speaking about the state that I am, which is the state that everyone is primordially if they wouldn't just identify with the superimposed layers of personality, identity, and all of that. So fundamentally, for all human beings and all animals and all that exists, all life, whether it's you know from wherever you wanted to, wanted to say it is from, even extraterrestrials or whatever it may be, the consciousness, the awareness, the primordial field in which it becomes aware, we become aware of the things, that field, that I, is who I fundamentally am. And I am, in that sense, prior to this body, prior to my memories, prior to my history, prior to any identification. I come before, right? That's why it said, um, before Moses, I am. Right? I think it was one of the things in the Bible or something, before Moses, I am. And people were arguing, you know, how can you, how can Jesus have ever said that he was before Moses? Obviously, Moses came before Jesus. And the truth is that he wasn't speaking about I, Jesus, the man, the physical form came before Moses am, uh, it was. He said, I am before Moses, which if you read it properly, you understand the I. Once the I is understood to be the very awareness which is listening now in you, that which is aware of me speaking, that which is looking at the screen, that which is aware of the sensations and perceptions in your room or wherever you are, that which is listening, that which is aware of all these things, there's something fundamental prior to that, which is just this blank conscious awareness, which is receptive enough to perceive all the things that come and go. I am before that. I am before the things that come and go. So before that which is, oh, you know, so go back to that one for a second, um, that which is always here, right? That which is always here is not what came first or what came last, nor the things in between. That which is always here is the thing that's, which is watching, right? In other words, I am that. I am the way, the life, and the truth. Before Moses, I am. I and the Father and one. Now, I'm not speaking about this person here or this body alone, right? I'm speaking about every single aware piece of awareness in the universe is that one I. There is only one I in the universe, and I am that. And that's not this I, it's I. I has to be seen as a principle. It's the godly principle of the very u universe itself. It's awareness, consciousness. And I am that. Now, 
to the degree that you or me or anyone else identifies with other things, secondary things like body, mind, history, past, person, and all the associations and memories that we have about, about things, and get identified with that to the point in which we lose the awareness of what I truly am before that, what we truly are before that, then we become this other thing that is mortal, this other person that has a body and that will come and, and go, that will die and get born and die and, and become fat or unhealthy. All these things are affected and can be affected in the existential life. But I, that which is aware of all of that, do not get affected by anything. So. When I rest as the I, and I investigate the space of consciousness, the space of being, the space of presence, I really investigate that space from that space. I am here, I am perceiving the space, I look for boundaries, I can find none. I look whether I, that awareness, is thick or thin, and I can't find there is any size or dimension to it. I look whether it's old or young, and it's ageless. I look whether it's big or small, confined, tall or short, or wide or narrow, or black or white, or whether it's Jewish or Muslim or Christian, I can't find any of it. I am not. I am that which is prior to all of those conceptions, all of those um, limitations, all of those formal dualistic constructs, all of these social constructs, familiar constructs, religious constructs, I am before all of it. That's why I am before Moses. Before Moses, I am. And I am the way, the life, and the truth. And you will have none other, none other than I. That is because the I in you, the I in everybody on this planet, on, and, and all forms of life, including all animal life, and including even, you could say, um, uh, uh, the forms of life that seem to be lifeless or, or um, what we call um, in science, basically not having a soul or any kind of form of life like stones and rocks, you know, the inanimate objects. Everything contains inside of all of that, prior to all of that, before they take shape, I am, and I am that. And when we decide to find that place because we want to know our true nature and we, we rest in that place and we investigate that place from inside that place, not as an intellectual um, kind of exercise, but as a true inquiry to want to know who I truly am and then I rest into this place of being, of silence, and from the silent place of awareness, I look at awareness and I f try to investigate the environment, as so as to speak, of this I, I find that I'm boundless, I'm eternal, I'm infinite, I am consciousness, I am one with the Father, I am the way, I am the life, I am the truth, before Moses I, I am. I am before all things and after all things and all the while all things are perceived, I am. For I am the way, the life, and the truth. And so and that's why I kind of like wrote this little piece again and I know I'm repeating myself um, sometimes because I do have other videos where I kind of touched on this as well because it's such an important point. But um, that which is always here is what I am. It's not what came first or what came last or any of the things in between. That which is always here is that which is watching, and that is what I am, the real I, the consciousness, the awareness. And once we discover that to be our true nature, our real, essential, primordial field from which we arise, and from where we, into where we still subside again when these forms, things disappear, then I know myself to be immortal, and that is the I that is in you and in everyone, because we are all this one I of the universe. And I, that I, and the Father am one. So that's why they say you should have none other than I, for I am the way, the life, and the truth.